Behind this fence are the last surviving remnants of Sydney's abandoned movie studio theme park, Fox Studios Australia Backlot. Opening up in November of 1999, the $261 million theme park was relatively small, but did include one experience that actually won a themed entertainment association award for outstanding achievement, Titanic The Experience. Unfortunately, this incredible experience wasn't enough to keep the theme park open. Closing at the end of 2001, citing sharp tourism decline post 9-11 as the main reason for its closure. Though if you ask a lot of people, they're surprised the park even survived this long. For review time, I'm Luke Carroll. And this is the history of Sydney's abandoned movie studio theme park, Fox Studios Australia Backlot. For 116 years from 1881 to 1997, Moor Park was the official home of the Sydney Royal Easter Show. However, with plans to move the show to the newly built Sydney showground at Olympic Park, a rather large parcel of land located only minutes outside of the CBD of Sydney was opened up for lease proposals by the government, with the main stipulation being that the land must at least remain partially open for public use. One of the most surprising outcomes was that the eventual winning bidder to the 99-year lease was 20th Century Fox, one of the big six major American film studios. They had plans to build a working film studio here, and after having seen the success Universal Studios and Disney were having with their movie-themed amusement parks, they agreed to build the first, and still to this day only, 20th Century Fox theme park on the land to fulfill their public use portion of their lease agreement. On the 7th of November 1999, Hollywood came to Sydney. With great fanfare and a star-studded gala, the Fox Studios Australia Backlot theme park was open for business. On opening day, the park had only a handful of attractions, including a recreation of the set from one of Australia's biggest movies at the time, Babe, as well as The Simpsons Down Under, an experience that allowed selected guests to be animated through motion capture and take part in a recut version of the classic Bart vs. Australia episode of The Simpsons, after which you can meet your favourite Simpsons characters and walk through some of the famous locations from the show. The real e-ticket attraction of the park, however, was Titanic The Experience. This $26 million walkthrough attraction was based on the insane success that was James Cameron's Titanic film, which had recently blitzed the worldwide box office charts. But this attraction was not just a homage to the movie. It would include hundreds of props from the films, the 20 meter long model used for filming which was restored to its former glory, as well as set locations that were painstakingly recreated for the attraction. The spectacular experience produced and built by Technifex in California, based on designs by the Entertainment Design Corporation, was really two separate experiences. When you were waiting in line, you would be split into two groups. And in that group, you would either experience what it was like to be a first-class passenger or what it was like to be in steerage, the lowest class available. No matter which group you got placed in, everybody started together in a third-class lounge aboard the ship, which was built on the world's largest motion platform for the time, able to hold 150 guests per show. Once you found your way into the lounge, upon looking out the portholes, you could see the iceberg approaching until crash. The ship strikes the iceberg. The entire room tilts and shakes as the walls around you begin to buckle and water starts rushing in. You would be ordered to evacuate the ship. And if you were in first class, you would head through amazingly detailed recreations of the gym and promenade deck before jumping into one of two lifeboats, modeled exactly like the real ones on the Titanic. Once everyone was seated, the boats push away from the ship and the guests watch the silhouette of the Titanic with its passengers, cargo, and memories sink into the North Atlantic. If you were lucky enough to be a first-class passenger, you lived to tell the tale. However, if you were a passenger in steerage, your experience after the third-class lounge was quite different. You would start traversing the rocking hallways of the ship's lower levels on your way to the famous cargo room, where pipes would break above you, a piano would slide across the floor almost hitting your group, and the famous Renault car where Jack and Rose got to know each other rolls in front of you, complete with a handprint in the rear window. 
Upon working your way through the cargo room, you would find yourself in the boiler room. As you were taken across a gangway, the boat continued to fill with water, and the entire room was engulfed in flames and explosions, all of which represented your death, being trapped aboard the Titanic as it sank into the frigid North Atlantic waters. No matter if you survived to tell the tale or not, both groups finish the experience with one last piece of movie magic. As they see the iconic grand staircase of the ship, restored from being underwater and covered in algae, to its prior grandeur as the movie's iconic score plays. Titanic The Experience deservedly won a themed entertainment award for outstanding achievement in the year 2000, but unfortunately, it saw nowhere near the visitor numbers it deserved. It's also strange to think that not too long ago, there was an attraction in a major movie studio theme park where you could die aboard one of the greatest human tragedies of our time. Fox tried to explain this as the attraction being the experience of an extra on the Titanic film rather than a passenger on the real ship, but it seems to be quite a fine line to tread. The only other attractions at the park included the Hall of Cool Stuff, a props warehouse that sounds about as uninspired as its name, featuring items from films such as Alien, Predator and other famous Fox film franchises as well as a number of show attractions, including the classic audience sound effects style show in the soundstage and Lights, Cameras, Chaos, the largest show at the park and possibly the most Australian sounding thing I've ever heard of. The show centered on Flying Fox Films, where you'll meet legendary kangaroo film director, Eric Von Roo, and his two glamorous stars, the temperamental Carmen Cockatoo and Leonardo de Kangaroo and they needed your help in completing the most expensive film of all time, Space the Musical. At an opening cost of $261 million, the theme park was incredibly small, featuring just those few attractions with no real rides. But the ticket price they were asking for did not reflect what was on offer costing the expensive opening day ticket prices of around $40 per adult and $25 per child, which was more expensive than Disneyland at the time and with similar prices to what it would cost you to go to Wonderland Sydney for the day just down the road, which offered a whole lot more for the same price. In the following year, even cutting these ticket prices down almost 50% and opening the gates up to allow free entry to the side and just charging for the attractions themselves, wasn't enough to keep the park gates open. And after trading losses averaging over a million dollars per month, at the end of 2001, Fox Studios Australia backlot would close forever, after being open for only around two years. The park's attendance numbers were abysmal compared to what was expected. Overall numbers estimate that the park on average only saw around a thousand ticketed guests each day, which fell incredibly short of the 1.5 million guests the park expected to attend within their first year of operation. The studios themselves at Fox Studios Sydney though did not close and just absorbed the area that was once the theme park into their own working film studios and closed the area off to the public. The main street is now an outdoor filming location, the Simpsons stage is an audio recording studio, the Titanic Experience building is now one of the largest sound stages in Australia, and the Lights Camera Chaos Theatre still exists as a hireable venue with audience seating. Any hope that people had of the theme park reopening was thwarted in 2003, when most of the props and memorabilia from the park and especially the Titanic attraction were either sent back to Mexico or auctioned off. Like many attractions that were lost around the world at that time, the official reason given for the closure of the backlot was a sharp decline in international tourism after the 9-11 terrorist attacks. But many attendees and locals said they were surprised it even lasted that long, as the area was simply too small to house a theme park, having too few attractions and no room for future expansion. Some groups have argued that the project was designed purposely to fail, the New South Wales government imposed a requirement on whoever leased the land that a percentage of the old showground site must remain open for public use for a minimum of two years, and the more cynical of observers have noticed that the back lot was a major part of that public access and closed soon after the required period of time. Whatever the reason really is, we may never know. But if you get the chance to head down to the entertainment quarter at Moore Park today, you can step foot in and explore part of one of Sydney's shortest lived theme parks. 
though as each year goes by, more and more of the park gets removed, leaving behind bland, uninspired buildings and taking with them a ton of theme park memories. And that's the story of Fox Studios Australia Backlot. If you come down here to the entertainment quarter at Moore Park, you may notice little inklings that a theme park was once here. But as you approach the black gates at the end of the path, it tells you there's no more theme park memories to be made anymore. For review time, I'm Luke Carroll. Thanks for watching. We would like to give a big thanks to everyone who helped on this episode, especially to Russell Tate for the original park map vectors, and Rock Hall, the co-owner of Technifex and the overseer of the Titanic project, who gave me an incredibly helpful interview. Also, if you like what you saw, consider subscribing to Review Time to see our future theme park reviews, history, and more.